So I've been wanting to do a new version of the solar trailer, version 2.0, for a while. And it was a Sunday, and I was watching some videos on YouTube, and I saw this company, Tusca Outdoors, that was at a show in Harrisburg, but they were featuring this new camper that just sat on a 5x8 trailer. So if I could incorporate that into the solar trailer too, I don't have to worry about any of the boondocking accommodations. I knew I wanted it. So the first thing I needed was a 5x8 trailer, but in lieu of that, I went with a 5x10 trailer. So I'd have a little bit of room on the back end for batteries, inverters, things of that nature. The camper is only 190 pounds, and this trailer is only 460 pounds. So I'm starting off with a really nice light setup. So of course I couldn't wait. I ran out and bought the trailer. I wasn't sure if my camper was ready. It was confusing when I got confirmation. I spoke to one of the co-founders, Josh, and he explained that no, it is not ready and gave me a timeline for when it would be ready. So I hit pause, although I had already went out and bought the trailer. And then I got the call, it was ready. So I traveled to Lebanon, PA, where Tusca Outdoors is, a few hours east of where I'm at, and that's Josh helping me load the Tusca camper, the hitchhiker, and then I went home. I kept an eye on my range. This isn't in its final form, but I noticed I did not lose a lot of range because it was not just a sail catching air. It had a little bit of aerodynamics built in, but nonetheless, I made it home, and then I started trying to figure out what panels I was going to put on it and in what configuration. I picked the panels based on a comment from Solar Trailer version one. Individuals said I should use smaller panels because there can be small fractures in the panels if they're too big and they flop around too much. So at Signature Solar in Texas, where I get most of my solar equipment, I found these panels and they were commercial panels, thicker framing and meant for commercial applications. I thought it would do better and plus they were smaller. So I ordered those. So the cells in these panels I bought are Maxi and Gen 2. Maxi and Gen 3 is actually what they're using on the Aptura vehicle that boasts a thousand miles of range. So I thought it was fitting that version 2 is going to use a similar, although it's an earlier generation, cell as the Aptura. So now I had to meet with Dan. Dan is a Weldon man. So Dan and I came up with a plan. He was going to build aluminum framing all around the trailer. And so we drew it out on paper and he began. Once Dan fit me in his schedule, things progressed fairly quickly. He added the aluminum framing. I had given him a panel, so each individual section housed a panel. You can see it on the right there, that square. And then all I had to do was rivet it into place. Once he was done, I picked it up and loaded the Tusca camper on it. And it gave me sufficient room in the rear for a outdoor cabinet for my inverter, some batteries perhaps, and outlets. So here is the final product. So yes, I know I'm driving fairly slowly. That's because the individual cells, or solar panels rather, uh, are not secured to the trailer at this point. I used these stretchy rubber things. I'm not sure what they're called, but you see them on maybe Jeep hoods once in a while, but you pull them down and then they lock in place. 
adding tension. So they are now mounted and I'm going to post this video, but I actually did a range test where I towed it about 250, 260 miles round trip to my sister's camp. And I tested the range. I had range loss, obviously, but it did fairly well. It's a little taller than I wanted. I wanted it to be as low to the ground to be equal to or lower than my Model X, but it just didn't work out that way. So each panel is 330 watts. I have nine panels. The back one actually has gas struts, so you can just lift it up. The others I opted to not add the struts because when Dan built the frame, I had him build it in such a way that the hinges can go beyond 90. So I can actually angle one side up and the other side down to catch the sun if it's lower into the sky. So it'll be a little bit more efficient. But it's not bad. Just under 3,000 watts on this fairly light trailer. And here it is. Better view. On the left there's a waterproof case. I have my EG4 6000 XP in it. Underneath there's a series of outlets. It's in a box. It came that way. It's one you might find at a campground, but it has a NEMA 1450 to charge vehicles, a 30 amp plug you can plug a camper into, and a 120 plug, which came with the breakers, everything in place. I just literally had to hang it, hook it up. And then the Pelican case on the back right area. Inside I had some commercial batteries that blew up in a lightning strike. So I put them in a Pelican case to make it waterproof and added a BMS. And voila, I have power. Okay, after this section, I'm going to break down all the costs. So stay tuned. There are those fasteners. You see the back has a strut. There's my Pelican case with the batteries. Now I know I can only charge or discharge while the front door is open to the inverter. I just haven't figured out how to get enough airflow in there. And also if I open it up in some way to let it breathe, what happens when it's raining? So I haven't figured it out. Trailer was 3195 plus tax, title, license, prep. I don't know, it was about 3700 all in, out the door, tax title license. Hitchhiker was a special um, for that show it was premiered at. So I got it for $2,295. The EG4 is 1400 The outdoor enclosure uh, for the EG4 was 285 Pelican case, 336 Aluminum for Dan's welding. 2215. I'm not including the cost of the welding. You'd have to find your own Dan to do the welding. So I'm not including that, but it was a few thousand dollars. The outlets are 84 and overkill solar are the BMSs I use, 175. So all in just under ten thousand dollars plus the welding. So I'll follow this video with a range test and then I actually want to show a second vehicle towing this that I've purchased. You might have seen it or at least part of it. 
in this video but I want to talk about my Tesla some experiences I've had with Tesla recently and my new electric vehicle so stay tuned feel free to subscribe again I'm not much of a youtuber I just like having projects and documenting them so if you enjoy this kind of content come back and check out the rest of solar trailer version 2